All righty, welcome to the training, everybody. We are talking about Wayfair today. Um, this is this is Wayfair.com, and just prior to me hitting the record button, I just surveyed you guys who are here with me. There's about 30 of you here, and um, the vast majority of you guys don't use Wayfair as a supplier. Um, some of you have never even heard of Wayfair, but um, I asked mainly with the intent of finding out how many of you guys use these guys as, as a supplier, and most don't. I want to talk about them as a supplier for eBay um, because they actually have some pretty cool stuff, and um, they're actually a pretty decent supplier, depending on what you list to sell. I, I could say that with a lot of different companies. Some of you guys absolutely do not like using Walmart, whereas others love using Walmart as a supplier. So I, I suppose it depends on your experience a little bit. But Wayfair's pretty decent. And I kind of want to talk you through the steps of just evaluating them and, and deciding if it's if it's a supplier that you want to try out. Ultimately, when you do retail drop shipping with us, and, and yes, they are a retail supplier, by the way, Vicky. So this is this is someone, this is a company that any of you guys can use. There's no registration involved. They're not a wholesale company. They're a retail company, so we can use them without any applications, okay? So any of you guys are, are fair game here. Um, I'll, bet, I'll bet you guys, some of you guys said you've never heard of them before. I bet you have, but you've seen one of their commercials. They're actually a pretty good sized company, and they're more of a sort of furnishings, decor, kind of a, a debt one-stop shop for everything you need for your home mostly. I mean, they have some other things outside of that, but mostly that's their niche. And uh, that's a great niche to be in on eBay because home goods sell um, fairly well. And so um, this might be a good option for you. So I want to talk you through Wayfair a little bit. We'll go through um, some of the little nuances of using them. But guys, whenever you're looking at a supplier that you don't know much about, can I just can I just suggest when it, when it's a retail supplier that you take on kind of the this type of an of an approach. Let me let me just bring up some notes for you guys real quick. Take a few notes here if you don't mind. All right, let me zoom out just a tad bit. Um okay, so I'm going to say, you know, when looking into a new retailer slash supplier number one we really need to consider their shipping first don't we so when you come to wayfair let me kind of let me explain how their shipping works a little bit um if you see up here at the top you're going to notice this i know this is probably kind of small on your screen but it's going to say um free shipping over $49. Do you see that up there? And if I if I click on that, it's going to give me some information about their shipping. So just make some notes here because if you want to use them, it's important you know that their shipping is free on their orders as long as it's over $49. Okay? So $49 or over, and we'll make a note of that. We'll say uh, free if 49 plus. Okay. Now, if you're ordering something that's not $49, it's it's $48.99 and lower, right? Then it's a $4.99 shipping fee. Okay. Which is good to know, right? You need to know that for your for how you're pricing things. So if less than $49, it's gonna be $4.99 for shipping. Now guys, let me ask you a question. Is that is that always true? Is that always true that that shipping is free for 49 or more and 499 if it's 49 or less? It, it's not always true, right? And in, in most cases, uh if you look into the details, in which case they have some fine print right here, you'll find that they say some exclusions apply such as commercial items, home improvement items, large fixtures, non-standard items, and deliveries outside the USA. So 
in other words, like if you're getting something that's a little awkward, maybe something larger, um, harder to ship, that may not apply. The good news is you can usually figure out through Wayfair if it's something that's going to cost a little bit more. You just add it to your shopping cart and you look you look at the shipping price and it'll tell you if there's a if there's going to be an added fee. Yeah, like you said, Russell, if it's particularly large or heavy, maybe a little awkward, right? So th there may be freight charges on something like that. So just be aware of that. But by and large, most of the stuff is going to fall in line um, with these items. Now, they also tout the fact at Wayfair that they've got almost half a million items on their site that, that qualify for two-day delivery. Um, I'm not going to survey you on this, but how many of you guys use Amazon as a shopper? I'll bet a lot of you guys do. And how many of you guys who use Amazon use Amazon Prime? I'll bet a lot of you guys do, right? Amazon Prime guarantees the majority of, of Amazon items are usually two-day shipping. And so that's kind of what they have here. It's almost like they're Wayfair Prime items. There's about, there's about half a million things on this site that qualify for that, okay? So just, just to note, you, you guys have to know the shipping of a company before you start throwing stuff up on eBay, right? Wayfair has some really just beautiful products um, my wife shops there all the time. It's a huge, huge, huge e-commerce site, and there's there's an opportunity to uh, to list their stuff on eBay and make pretty good money off of it. But don't ever start unless you'll look at their shipping first. Okay. What's another thing we need to look at, guys? We need to look at the return policy, don't we? So Wayfair's return policy. If if I want to find that, where do I need to look? Where do I go to find their return policy? Well, sometimes I look here at the top. And I see if it says anything there, maybe under account. Whoops, I didn't mean to click on that. You can usually roll your mouse over it. But no, nothing, nothing about returns there. By the way, why do we need to know about returns? Why do I care about this right now? About Wayfair, investors, career. Why, why are we so concerned about their uh, returns policy? Yeah, you could use the site map. See if they have a site map here. Terms of use. No, that's not it. Where is their return policy? Um, all right, I'll tell you what, when all else fails, Google it. You could use the sitemap, Jeff, that's true, but you know what? I'm just going to Google return policy Wayfair, and Google is going to magically tell me. There we go. I don't know where that link was. That was so odd. I found it earlier while I was preparing for the webinar. I couldn't find it. Anyway, you can always just Google Google it. But yes, Russell, you got to know the return policy in case you sell to somebody who wants to return an item, right? Well, Wayfair has a, a an interesting return policy. It's it's a 30-day policy. So I'll make a note of that here. I'll zoom in so you guys can read this just a little bit better. Um, it's it's 30 days, uh, meaning that they have 30 days to you know, process a return. And if it goes beyond that, there there are no returns, right? Um, Barbara, it does somewhat depend on the product. So most companies have a general return policy where they say, hey, everything 30 days, you know, money back. But some products act as exclusions. And if And if you look into Wayfair's return policy, not surprisingly, um, they say for some products, we offer a modified version of our return policy. If you are ordering one of these items, please click on the link below to learn more about its return policy. Sure enough, Barbara, they have specific return policies for mattresses, rugs, luggage, and bags. Um, so if you if you plan on listing things uh, in that vein, you'll need to make sure you understand the return policy. 
Um, but it's it's very it's pretty standard for the most part. I mean, 30 days is is pretty common, I would say. Um, they they uh, if if you get something from Wayfair and you later just decide, so let's say I'm a buyer, and and let's say I buy something from Mark here. Mark is listing a, a Wayfair item on eBay, and I buy it from him, and I get it, and I'm like, you know, got some buyer's remorse. You know what? I really don't need this item. And so I contact Mark back on eBay and I say, Mark, you know what? I really just decided I didn't want this. Can we process a return? And as long as it's within 30 days, Mark can say, oh, yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll process a return. So Mark then goes to Wayfair and they have a little spot where you can you can process a return policy. They'll get you um, a label of some sort that you can send to your customer and then uh, your customer ships it back. Now. Wayfair is going to give you a full refund as a seller minus the cost of the return shipping. So they don't pay return shipping. So if you process returns with Wayfair, just realize that that your customer needs to pay the return shipping. Now, if it's if it's a different situation and you can look here in their return policy, if, if their order is damaged, you know, then then Wayfair is going to make some some you know they'll they'll make some exceptions to this rule but generally that's that's their return policy okay questions about that or does that does that for the most part make sense it's pretty standard i mean it's very much similar to you know like a walmart or a target they're just i think they're a little more stringent so 30 days um buyer pays return but you know what you guys on your ebay listings are are listing the same type of policy most of you guys are doing either a 14 day th or 30 day with buyer retaining or with buyer paying return shipping. So this isn't this isn't something that shouldn't coincide with what you're already doing. That should work out just fine. Um, Russell, you say when returning or when return shipping is not included, is it common to make the customer pay? Yeah, it is common, um, and it's okay to say, hey, by the way. I'm happy to process a return, but per our policy on our eBay listing, um, the buyer has to pay the return shipping. So we're happy to refund you minus the cost of, of the return shipping. And funny enough, that actually may deter them from wanting to ship it back. That that has happened before. So it's common and you're not in the wrong to do that. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to have a looser policy and Give people the benefit of the doubt early on. That's that's okay too. You can do that. You could you could eat that cost if you can afford to do it. Um, I typically I typically don't though. Um, and the customer returns it to uh, Wayfair directly. So to answer your question, Jeff, you, you, it's not like you're going to get your hands on it. The product's going to go directly back to Wayfair, which is good. Okay, so we've looked at shipping, we've looked at the return policy. There's one other thing I always, always, always look at before I start listing products from one of these suppliers that we haven't talked about. And I look for rewards programs. Okay, now different companies have different re rewards programs. Uh, a few months ago, we talked about Target and how you get like a 5% back um, if you get a target card, you get a 5% back on everything. Uh, Wayfair has something kind of like that. Um, they have a, a Wayfair credit card. So you can apply if, so anyway, you're not going to use this guys, unless you start doing a fair bit of Wayfair business. But if you start selling a lot of their products, you might want to consider getting their credit card, um, because they give you $40 off your first order of 250 or more which if you're using Wayfair and you're selling furniture and stuff that'll happen so you get you'll save 40 bucks just boom just for opening up a card and then you they they have a reward system with the amount that you spend you you gain rewards points just like any card and then you can use those on Wayfair um which is a big deal because if you're doing you know 5 or 6 grand a month in Wayfair merchandise that could equate to a whole ton of points that you can be using to save money or to even splurge on yourself a little bit right so always 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 look for some type of a card um, 
so so that you can take advantage of that when you start using a supplier pretty aggressively. If you if you don't know, if you're just going to test out Wayfair, don't go get their card yet. Test them out first. And then if you sell a lot, then then go consider it, okay? I'm not going to go into detail on their card. I, I don't use their card. I, I use Wayfair um, a little bit, but not enough to where I get a I get a card from them. And don't take that to mean that they're not a good supplier just because I don't use them like crazy. I have my own suppliers I use, and I've got clients that have their own suppliers, and, and Wayfair gets used a little bit. Some clients swear by it and use it a whole bunch, so it, it just depends. Now, we're not going to pretend to tell you that Wayfair is the cheapest retailer out there. They have some items that are um, that are more expensive that you could actually get somewhere else for cheaper if you looked for it. So I'm not here to claim that Wayfair is the cheapest. They are in some areas, but um, you know, you'd have to research some of their products on your own. If you're doing the retail strategy, though, the strategy should be mass listings, bulk postings, and, and you can see um, what works that way. Okay. Um, Gail, you say, will they ship to a different address without including your information and invoice? Yes. Gift shipping options are available. Good question. In fact, I need to add that to our list here. Number four. Do they gift ship, right? That's that's an important question. So I, I think I, I'm I'm talking specifically about Wayfair today, but guys, can you just write down these these four points? When you're looking at a different retail supplier, will you make sure to look at their shipping, returns, rewards, and gift shipping options? Will you look at those things? before you decide to list their stuff and make sure you understand them. Because I, I, don't, I don't want you to make a mistake not knowing their policies until you've looked into the company a little bit. And Cheryl, good question from you. She says, is this only for selling on eBay? No, you, I mean, you can use Wayfair um, for, for your, your web businesses as well, your websites. Okay, good question. So let me give you an example of a, a Wayfair product, and I, yeah, I would challenge you to do this anyway, because sometimes this is this is good just for you guys to see that this stuff can and does sell. I was here earlier, and I found this item right, right here. It was the first item I looked up on Wayfair. I was going to use as an example for you guys. This is an August Hill Corner TV stand. And out of curiosity, I copied the title here, and I, I went out to eBay, and I did a search for this item. I just I just copied and pasted the, the title of the item right into eBay. Now, note here that this is being sold for $89.99, right? And if I add this to my cart, I'm going to do that right now, add it to my cart. Let's actually go to my cart here. I added a couple of other things earlier. Let me delete those out. Remove. Remove. Okay, so apparently this item is regular, 198. Um, it's 90 dollars. Shipping is free, but in most cases Wayfair has tax. So I really should probably add that here too. Number five, do they tax? Because you need to know that, right? So you can estimate sales tax. Um, they're saying, yes, there is tax, and we could estimate right in the neighborhood of, of, of 10%. Even though it's not showing as 10%, it sort of depends on where it's being shipped, right? But, but do they have tax? That's a question you need to ask yourself. But no other surcharges or anything, so we should be, we should be good with this item. Anyway, if, if I search on eBay for it, you're going to see it listed a lot. Okay, this item right here and and notice all the different prices. Remember, we're getting it for uh $96 after tax. So it's selling for 106 here, 122, 111, 999 as an auction. You ought to watch that. 134, 145, 129, 111, 118, 186, 
135, 130, 158, 115, 109, 111, 152, 126, 117, right? These prices are, are all over the board, aren't they? Check out this one right here. This one's only 60 bucks, but it probably doesn't have free shipping. But anyway, interesting. I mean, isn't that interesting that those prices are so all over the board? And I can say almost for for with assurity that if you looked up a lot of Wayfair products, you would see a lot listed on eBay. It's not like this is a, a, a super exclusive supplier that nobody knows about. Um, but you see, you see some poor titles in here. Some of the titles aren't really very good. Some of the prices are way high. The item's definitely selling. I mean, I, I think it might be this one right here. For 117, this person has sold two of them. See, if I come over here and look at this listing a little more closer, I see the two sold right here. If I click two sold, um, it looks like they sold one on December 8th for 108. I don't see the other one. And you can actually look through these listings to see if anybody's anybody's been selling these. Right? Maybe this one right here. This has three watchers on it, so one sold at 11 at 111. I like to look up the watchers ones because those oh seven of these sold. So at one eleven twenty, if I click on seven sold, it's going to show me what this item sh uh, sold for. One seventeen sold for one twenty four, one twenty four, one twenty four, and one twenty. That was in January. So I mean, these are the, obviously these are selling. Um, so this could be a good listing to put up, right? That that doesn't mean it's not without its competition. There's plenty of competition, but you could you could probably you could feasibly do this with anything. I mean, let's just go um, let's go patio in Wayfair. So let's go furniture and then patio. Let's look through these. I I haven't looked through these by the way, so we'll just do this on the fly. Um, let's do what? Well, whatever. I guess it doesn't matter. Let's do some wicker stuff. And let's do, you know, wicker sofas and love seats. This one has a lot of good reviews, 160 reviews at four and a half stars. Let's look up this one. So I am going to click in on it and let's just copy the title. And let's see, let's see if it's doing anything on eBay. Again, this is all this is all live, guys. I haven't I haven't pre planned any of this. Oh, I love this. Notice notice right up at the top, the first listing, if I if I put this in, I get Wayfair's official eBay account. Now now in most cases, what's our price on this again? Yeah, our price is what it's listed for on Wayfair Wayfair for, so uh three thirty nine. Okay. They have it listed for three thirty nine on eBay, and it's it, and it's Wayfair's official eBay account. Now, <clears throat> for a lot of you, that might cause a concern. You might think, "Oh shoot, how am I going to compete with Wayfair themselves? They're already selling this stuff on eBay." But we've talked about this before with other retailers. Somebody tell me what's wrong with their listing, really quick. What's wrong with their listing? Their, yeah, their title is awful, isn't it? This is what's shocking to me. Way, Wayfair has a marketing department. They probably have a set of, a little team that handles all of their eBay stuff. Maybe they have a little a team of five or ten people that does all their eBay stuff. Yet their titles are just not very good. Which is exciting for me, right? Because I know that as a marketer, I can go and do a better better title than these guys. I can include better keywords, and I can get my Wayfair product to show up in places where theirs won't. And that's exciting to me. That just means that I have more of an opportunity to make a sale than even they do. So I could sell this for, you know, 480, and probably sell it even though somebody else, in theory, if they looked hard enough, could find it for cheaper, right? 
Natalie, so let me let me read your question real quick. Natalie says, so seeing that that men that there's many others or many other competitors essentially with not that much markup in price is not a deterrent in listing it. No. So like when I see a lot of competitors and there might be more here with these guys. Yeah, see this? Here's one listed, another poor title at 339. Here's one listed at 369. Here's one at 349. This one isn't the same product. Not the same product. Not the same product. That looks, is that the, yeah, I think that's the same one. 458. 458. Um, does it come with that little, oh, this is a two piece for 458. So this is a different product. Anyway, no, I'm, I'm not concerned. This one's for 471. Cause look, I mean, you're, you're going to see that in drop shipping. Like the, I don't want any of you guys to come into the drop shipping strategy with any sort of notion that you're you're ever going to be the cheapest because you're not and a lot of times you're going to be on the high side of the pricing but what's interesting is you you can beat out other listings you can you can be you can beat out other listings if you have better titles and and your account has better feedback and you you outrank them it makes such a big difference so yeah it is your it is it is your your title but at the same time um it's more than that. It's it's your account standing as a whole that's going to help you with that. Um, so I, anyway, I, I guess the point I'm trying to make today is I, is I show you is I don't think you need to get in here and do a lot of this research. Let's look up another product real quick just to just to uh, bring this point home. How about this one right here? Thousand bucks. Antigua Daybed with Cushions. Let's look this up on eBay, shall we? Listed for 942. Search. See if we can find the exact same kind. And sometimes you can't, by the way, even with Wayfair products, sometimes you can't. Here's, that's the exact same product, is it not? Yep, they've got it listed for thirteen hundred dollars. We could, in theory, get this for nine forty-two plus um, plus tax. Dang, look at this one, seventeen hundred, and they've got eight watchers on it. Right? Like, doesn't that doesn't that help drive this point home? Eight people have saved this item to their watch list. And this is listed at almost eighteen hundred dollars. We can get this here at Wayfair for a little over a thousand plus tax. Prices are going to be all over the board. They always will be. There's going to be some drastically lower than yours. There's going to be some like this one right here that are drastically higher. If we can find some happy median somewhere in the middle, uh, you can make sales, right? But but again, I'm not advocating you do a bunch of research here. I was just showing you some of this as an example. I, Again, we're just kind of doing this on the fly. We could do more of this, but I, I think I've driven the point home. Um, price is important, but not as important as we all like to make it out to be sometimes. Okay. So good supplier to consider. Let me uh, let me check any other questions, and then we'll we'll probably just finish up here. Um, Barbara, you say if you searched eBay for outdoor wicker love seat, would the Wayfair eBay account come up? Maybe we could try. Out door wicker love seat. So here's what's coming up for this. Here's one right here that showed up.
This one right here, uh, that looks kind of like the same one. I'm not sure if it is, but 418. This one right here might be it, 465. So anyway, but you know what? eBay search results, they change all the time. So if I did that same search an hour from now, we'd probably see some different listings that are showing up on the first page. Yeah, Oliver, that, uh, Oliver just asked, one seller is offering uh, monthly payments. Is that practical for us? Uh, it is. PayPal will actually um, offer that. So that's not even through you. You'll get paid up front, but then they'll be making payments to PayPal. So that's not going to, that's not going to impact you at all. Yep, titles make a big difference. Okay, well, anyway, guys, I, I won't I won't belabor the point here. We, we've done trainings like this before. I wanted to introduce Wayfair to you. I want I want you guys to all broaden your your perspectives a little bit about what you can use as a supplier. I know a lot of our examples and our trainings have been about Walmart or Target or Amazon or Sears, but but there's other suppliers that are available that you can find out there, and this is this is an example of one. And if you'll always look at the things that we outlined right here in our notes, shipping returns, rewards, gift shipping, and tax, so you understand how the how the supplier works, you're going to be better prepared to list. And I won't pretend like I've I've used every supplier out there, right? But I've done it enough and I've used enough to know that these are the main points to look for. Okay. Oh, funny coincidence. Yeah, Denise. Denise says she was sitting on Wayfair when we started this. <laughs> yeah, who knows? That is an odd coincidence indeed. Hey, so guys, we'll we'll finish up. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Um let's let's go ahead and turn off the recording. We'll see you guys all next week at the same time. This will be posted online for for you all to watch. Um I challenge you to use Wayfair. Try it out. Some clients swear by it. Others just use it on more of a supplemental basis. Um, figure it out for you because you might find a little niche within here that ends up really helping out your eBay account. Okay? Okay, everybody. Enjoy your Friday. Um, have a good weekend. We'll see you guys next time.